One, two, three, four. Yes, sir. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. I need y'all to sing this with me. I'm going up. I'm going up. Can't turn around. Can't turn around. Lord, plant my feet. Lord, plant my feet. On higher ground. On higher ground. I serve. Jesus on my side. 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 Yeah. Oh. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side. Jesus on my side. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. Not what I see. Whenever I need Jesus him, he is always there. Always on my side. Anybody got cheated? Anybody got cheated? Oh, he's on my side. Whenever I'm in trouble, oh, yeah, he will see me through. He's on my side. Oh, to the bridge. Oh, he's on.
Good morning, St. Luke friends and family. My name is Daryl. I am the proud musician here. It is virtual worship time. Most of you guys are watching on Facebook. I need you guys to like, share, please share, share, share. Let's prepare our hearts for mind and worship. And hey, if you're on YouTube, check us out at St. Luke Garland. Real simple, right? St. Luke Garland. You guys have a blessed Sunday. Y'all enjoy worship this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Come on, let's give God some praise on this beautiful Sunday morning. Hey. Can you worship with us this morning? mindful of me how you hear me when I call is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me?
of God I am a friend of God He calls me Listen, you guys, I hope you are enjoying virtual worship this morning. As we transition to giving, let's prepare our hearts and our minds. The information provided below is a way you can give. Only choose one. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for those who gave, those who had the desire to give but couldn't. God, we just ask that you just continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. St. Luke Garland family, it's Pastor Jasmine and I'm so excited and count it a blessing to be with you this morning. I just wanted to bring uh, before you just a couple of reminders. As you are still giving right now in this moment, I want to remind you that even though we are not worshiping together, your giving and the gift of generosity truly blesses not only the St. Luke Garland family, but the community surrounding. We are continuing to do outreach even in this season, and we'll be doing outreach through Thanksgiving and Christmas. How many of you know that there are more families this year that are in need because of COVID-19 than any other year that we have experienced in recent times? Listen, times were hard before COVID and now you know there are even more people and even more families standing in the need. And so I pray that as God is placing it on your heart what to give this morning, that you go ahead and are able to give just a little bit more and go a little bit further so that we can continue to be a blessing to the families that are in our community. I also wanted to come before you this morning just to share with you what I call a praise report. There is work that is being completed on the church and we wanted to share that with you this morning. We want to experience this together as a church family. The foundation work has been uh, started and completed all this week while we uh, have been worshiping and getting to know each other. The foundation work has been going forward and I am so excited that the next phase will continue. Listen, if you want to partner with us and you want to go ahead and sow into this renovation season, I'm encouraging you to do so. Like I said, we may not be able to worship together right now, but when we go back in the building, don't we want something that is uh, fresh and has been completed? And I pray in the name of Jesus that as you are giving that every seed and everything that you sow is going to go to the work of the church. And we are praying for additional partners even now. So if that is you, I'm praying that you go to our website, stlukegarland.org, and click that online giving tab. We cannot do anything without you and without God's prayer and support. Now also, I wanted to share with you, as we uh, were just assigned to be your pastors last week, we had our first virtual lobby last week and we wanna continue to get to meet you. So if you didn't join us at the virtual lobby or if you wanna come on back and hang out after church, I'm encouraging you to do so. So come on and meet me and Pastor Amos in the virtual lobby. Here's how you can do so. We have put a button on our website, 
stlouvegarland.org. And when you click that button, it'll take you right to the virtual lobby. And we will see you there at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now listen, one last thing I wanna tell you about, and it is exciting. We are going to worship together and just have a moment of Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving morning. We are gonna have a Thanksgiving Zoom for the St. Luke Garland Church family, and I want you to be there. We're not gonna take up your whole morning. We know that you wanna be with your family near and far and however you're going to do it, but I pray that you will join your church family just so that we can give God a little bit of thanks. And so on Thanksgiving morning at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, I pray that you will join us and here's how you can do so. Yes, everything is on our website, stlukegarland.org. There will be a button there for the Thanksgiving Zoom. And I pray that I will see you there. Pastor Amos and I are so excited to be your pastors this morning. And I pray that you pray for him as he brings forth the word of God this morning. We pray that it blesses you right where you are. So let's get ready for the word. How many know my worship is for real?
on, lift those hands. Say hallelujah. 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 My worship is say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is say, Lord, I praise you. Say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. My worship is say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. My worship is say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. My worship is say Lord I thank you. Say Lord I thank you. How many I truly thank God? My worship is for Say Lord I thank you. Say Lord I thank you. Lord I thank you. My worship is for Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My worship is say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. My worship is say hallelujah, hallelujah. St. Luke Garland, I am so blessed to be able to stand right here and share this word with you on this Sunday before Thanksgiving. I know this is a little different than what we are accustomed to, but we're still going to give God praise on this day. We are so thankful. Come on, type in the comments. I am thankful to make it this far. We are almost there, y'all. God has given me a word on last week when Pastor Jasmine was preaching. God kind of poured into me in the middle of a sermon and said, I got something for you to say. And I mentioned it to Pastor Jazz after her word. And I said, I, I have to share this message to the, the, the family here at St. Luke Garland. And I really pray that you hear this word and let it, let, it, let it minister to you. Let God speak to you at this moment. This is a word for this time now, for such a time as this. We're, we're closing the year 2020, a very difficult uh, and different type of year. <laughs> Uh, but God still has a word. God is still the King of Kings. He is still the Lord of Lords. He is still sovereign. And God wants me to share this message to you on this moment. So let's, let's, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Father, we are so thankful for you just being God. Even when we're in the midst of uncertain times, you have still shown yourself strong, mighty, merciful. And God, we are so thankful. As we enter into this word, God, let you speak and less of me and more of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, let's turn our Bibles into uh, the book of Psalms, the 42nd chapter. And I'm going to read the chapter in its entirety. Yes, all 11 verses in the New Living Translation. I want to read this again. Book of Psalms, chapter 42. The entire chapter. Here we go. In the New Living Translation, it says is this. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Day and night I have only tears for food while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? 
my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Now, now, I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you, even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mizar. Verse 7. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to God who gives me life. Oh God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by mine enemies? Verse 10, their taunts break my bones. They scoff. Where is this God of yours? Verse 11, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? Here we go. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. I will yet praise him. That's what the KJV said. Yet praise him. My God, my God, my God. Now I have another, I now have another scripture for us. A supporting text that says in Romans 12, verses 2. Romans 12, verses 2. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will hear, in, excuse me, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. My God, the word of God, the word of God. Listen, aren't you tired of the bad news? Uh, for many of us, this season has hit us close to home. Uh, or matter of fact, for some of us, it has hit us in the gut. Here we are about to celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, but for some of us, we ain't feeling Thanksgiving. We don't care about cutting any turkey. Uh, you, you, you know, we, we can't really say it out loud because we might scare the person around us. But <laughs> internally, we are screaming, I am on the edge. Whew. We're agitated. We're irritated. We're frustrated. We are worried. We are overwhelmed. We are at a tipping point. Listen, all it takes is one more call, one more text, one more tweet, one more email, and we might go off up in here. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn your neighbor and say, I am on the edge. Mm. You know, this year 2020 has been something else. You know, from one Zoom call to another, you know, trying to adjust to the social distancing, wearing masks and and having uh, you can't touch friends. You can't really hang with friends and and loved ones and can't really go everywhere without the paranoia of, oh, I might ca catch this deadly virus. You know, you know, we're paranoid. We're downcast. We're discouraged. It's taking a toll on us emotionally, mentally, psychologically, spiritually. We're, we're, we're tired. We are on the edge. When is this madness going to stop? When am I going to feel some normalcy? When is this suffering going to stop? When is this bad news going to end? I'm over it. Seriously, see, I'm numb. I, I, I think I'm about to I'm about to lose it. See, I am on the edge. You know, turn to someone sitting next to you again and say, I am on the edge. My God. Listen, I don't know who you voted for, but our country is severely divided. People are irritable. People are arguing left and right. People are fighting. People are dying. Our country is on the edge. When is this going to stop? You know, wh 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 where is the light at the end of the tunnel? Seriously, 
let me ask you this question. Are, are you dealing with any discouragement, any worry? Are you wondering where God is in all of this? I am too. You know, I'm looking at all this foolishness going on in the church, you know, on, on a grand scale and uh, seeing certain preachers standing for a certain presidential candidate who actually didn't win the, the election. But they're saying that he is God's man versus the other candidate. Listen, I, I really don't have much to say about that. But all I have to say is uh, people are looking at their church and asking, where is this God of yours? If y'all are arguing, where is this God of yours? That's that's that's. That's a tipping point. I, I, I am on the edge. Lord, we need you right now. We are desperate for you. We are, we are we, we're like a deer that's panting for water. We are thirsting for you, God. We are hungry for you, God. We are desperate for you, God. We need you in, for such a time like this, God. We are on the edge. <laughs> Verse 5 in, in Psalm 42, it says, uh, it starts with the question, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? You know, but here's the flip. It says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. My gosh, I will praise him again. I will yet praise him. I will praise him again. I will yet praise him. I'm on the edge, but I will yet praise him. I'm depressed, but I will yet praise him. I am overwhelmed, but I will yet praise him. My family member, my friend, my co-worker caught the virus, but I will yet praise him. My sister has cancer, but I will yet praise him. I don't know how I'm going to pay all my bills, but I will yet praise him. I lost my job. And I don't know where I'm going to pay these bills, but I will yet praise him. I don't know if I'm going to survive this, but I will yet praise him. We don't know how this political climate is going to change, how our country is going to turn around, but I will yet praise him. The word yet means uh, up until the present or a specified or implied time. So when you declare that I shall yet praise him. You're declaring that even though I am on the edge of losing my mind, I'm going to praise my God despite of not feeling it or not seeing it or not even believing it. It's for real, for real. Some of us may declare and not even believe it, but you know what? Let's keep it real. Uh, uh, we are witnessing and experiencing these events happening this year and wondering why God is allowing all this foolishness to happen. Good people are going down. People are dying. People are losing jobs. Good people. It's discouraging. It's disheartening. But guess what? God still reigns. God is still sovereign. God is still in control. God is still in the miracle working business. God is still the mountain mover. Can't no devil in hell get in the way of what God is going to do in your life, in your finances, in your health, in your specific situation, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your mind, whether it's in your spirit, in your soul. Can't nothing stop what God is getting ready to do. Whew. I know this year, 2020, uh, has literally worn you completely out. <laughs> you, you can't take any more of this foolishness. You know, you, I get it. One more trigger and you might go over the edge. You might flip. <laughs> but before you even think about it, can I share something with you? Uh, can, can I speak some life to you? Can, can I? Th this is the first thing God spoke into my heart to say to you. You are on the edge of a supernatural healing. I'm going to say it again. You are on the edge of a supernatural healing. Yes. Supernatural, meaning that it's not going to happen just through a just you know through a random man-made uh, device or, or vaccine or medication. You know, God can, and I believe He will bring supernatural healing to your body, to your mind, your past hurts, the rejections, that denial, that disappointment. He He can reverse that depression. You know, God can supernaturally help you overcome that self-doubt, help you overcome knowing your loving yourself, having self-worth, heal your broken heart 
build you up supernaturally. You, you know, I, I struggled with uh, self-worth. I, I, I really did. You know, no matter how big the opportunity, my talent, whether the stage or at church, or, you know, I hid behind that. And I went into a season of drought and doubt where I didn't have those stages. I didn't have an opportunity to share my gift and lost, kind of lost my identity and, and started uh, filling with a lot of self-doubt and, and low self-esteem until uh, one day I was serving at a church uh, I just took a random job at a church and I was vacuuming the sanctuary. Yes, yes, I was vacuuming the sanctuary. I had my, my, my headphones on, vacuuming the sanctuary. And, you know, I was downcast. I was discouraged. I was like, oh, God, I guess this is my life. I'm no longer this big musician or singer or, or you know, I was just beating myself up and God stopped me. He said, Amos. Stop trying to associate yourself with something bigger and be bigger. What? Yes, God said, Amos, stop trying to associate yourself with something bigger and just be bigger. I want to speak life to someone today and say, stop trying to associate yourself to a maybe a bigger job or a, maybe a bigger opportunity or, or be with that bigger personality or bigger person and be bigger. Be bigger. Write in the comments, say, be bigger. It's time for you to stand up and believe that you are a child of God and you are worth every bit of respect, love, uh, uh, money, uh, opportunity, favor. You deserve it. Do not doubt yourself. Do not walk with your head down. Do not be discouraged. Be bigger. My God, my God, my God, my God. I tell you, that shifted, that, 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 that began that supernatural healing where I started looking in the mirror and said, Amos, love yourself. You are worth more than that. You're more than just a musician. You're more than just a worship leader. You're more than just that. You are God's child. You belong to the, the king of kings and you are an heir to the kingdom of God. And so listen, be bigger, be bigger, be bigger. Stop hiding behind that title. Stop hiding behind that job. You're bigger than that. God has created you for doing so much more. You're worth more than that. Be healed and be bigger. You're on the edge of supernatural healing in your life. So don't you give up. Keep pressing, keep pushing, keep digging deeper. Keep being bigger, walk bigger, keep believing that through this dark and dreary time right now, we still serve a supernatural healing God. All we need to do is believe and walk by faith, knowing that God will heal and deliver you and all the mess you've endured in 2020 will turn around. I believe it. Secondly, this is what God has shared with me. You are on the edge of a financial breakthrough. You hear me? You are on the edge of a financial breakthrough. If you believe it, come on, put some hearts in there. Come on, come on. Listen, th it doesn't make sense for some of us because I know people have been furloughed. I know people have lost their jobs and, and having to take pay cuts. But guess what? I believe that God is getting ready to turn things around for your good. Believe, have faith, speak it out loud. I am on the edge of a financial breakthrough. Come on and say it. I am on on the edge of a financial breakthrough from God. Listen, we're less than six weeks away from a new year, 2021. And we must believe that your healing and your finances will turn around for your good. I believe and speak by faith that you will experience a significant increase in your life. For some of you, it will be a new business. For others, you will experience more influence and favor. For others, your gift, your idea will open doors and opportunities for significant increase. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Speaking, I am on the edge of a financial breakthrough. I've seen him do it. He's done it before and he will do it again. And my final point. You're on the edge of unexplainable peace. Come on, come on, say it. <laughs> You're on the edge of unexplainable peace. It's time to declare that the storm is over. 
Come on, speak those things as though they're not as though they are. Listen, today your storm is over. It may not seem like it, it you know, it, you know, but Peter, don't you look at those waves you know, beneath your feet while you while you're walking and following Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus, Peter. Come on. Don't you lose sight. Don't you lose hope. Keep your focus on Jesus. Do not be anxious for nothing. Another thing. It's time to let it go. Yes. I'm talking about how things used to be. Life has changed. You know, the first part of, uh, of, of, of uh, verse 4 in Psalm 42, he, he says, My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. <laughs> you know, many of us out here are wondering, you know, are we ever going back to normal? You know, uh, is it ever gonna, going to be uh, what it used to be? And uh, <laughs> honest, I, I'm not sure if things will ever be the same, you know, uh, but there's hope. Things may never be the same, but they may be better than they used to be. We don't know, but our focus is not to put our trust, trust in the things of man, but put our trust and hope in God and give him a yet praise the, despite of uh, these uncertain times. Give God a yet praise for all he has done, all he is doing and all that he will do. Let those past successes go and focus on making new success. Let those past failures go and win. Listen, let that heartbreak go and love again. Walk in that unexplainable peace of God. But you have to change the way you, you think. Think, listen, be transformed by the new renewing of your mind. Renew your mind. So today I speak peace over your mind. I speak peace over your heart. I speak peace over your spirit. I speak peace, peace, peace. You are on the edge of experiencing God's unexplainable peace. So during this week, turn, take time, turn that TV off. Stop watching all that junk. Turn that phone off or that tablet and just breathe. Receive that peace of God that will surpass any human understanding. You've been asking, where is God in all this? Well, the honest question, God has been asking you. Where have you been in all this? You've been on the edge. You've been extra irritable. You've been worried about what's happening next. You, you've been sleep, haven't been sleeping well. You, you, you haven't been functioning well, you know, you know. Well, today, let today be your first day. Speak peace, peace, peace. Renew your mind. Filter out all the noise and junk and receive the peace of God today. You are on the edge of supernatural healing, a financial breakthrough, and unexplainable peace. Listen, you're almost there now. Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in. The time is not, the, this is not the time to give up now. You know, this is not the time to throw in the towel. This is the time to refocus your thoughts. This is the time to realign yourself to the will of God. This year is coming to a close. We have a lot to be thankful for. We made it this far only by the grace of God. We are on the edge of a new year and it's time to move forward with a renewed sense of hope and walk in a confidence knowing that God is with you. Even when un the most uncertain times uh, are happening in your life, even when the most strangest year ever, God is still with you. You are on the edge of something Believe it, receive it, and walk in it. My God, my God. <sighs> Today, uh, we are grateful for this season of Thanksgiving. But I know a lot of people are dis disturbed and kind of distracted and not realizing that God is still blessing you. You, you, you. you made the wake-up list. You're, 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 you're alive today. You may not have all that you used to have. You, you may not be able to travel and see family like you did last year, but you know what? You are grateful. But this is an opportunity for you to just
get refocused. Renew your mind. Renew your thoughts. Realign yourself to the will of God. Some of you may have, 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 have fallen off. You're not reading your Bible like you used to. You're not praying like you used to. You're not spending time with God. Today, let today be the first day where we take a new step. Let's, let's get ready for 2021. It's, it's going to be the first days of the best days of your life. Come on. Let's make that commitment today. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Now, someone may have never accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I, I, I throw this invitation to you today. You want to be on the right side and not on the dark side. This is your opportunity to accept Christ. And it says in the word, it says, if you confess publicly that he is your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. It's a simple thing. So let's, let's take this moment. If you are ready to walk on the right side with God, repeat this prayer with me. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent of all my wrongdoings. I am a sinner. But I acknowledge today that you died on the cross and got up on the third day with all power in your hands. I thank you for saving me today. I thank you for forgiving me. I now can declare today that you are my Lord and Savior. And now I believe I am saved. I am saved. I am saved. If you believe it, come on. If you receive it, come on. If you're ready to walk in it, come on. Let's give him glory for the people who are walking on the right side of faith. Come on, come on. Let's give them glory. Let's give God glory today. Come on, come on. You are on the edge of a breakthrough. You are on the edge of, of something amazing to happen in your life. And I thank God that we are witnesses of it today. And if you have made that confession today, if you have said that prayer, please, please either mention it on the comments or simply send an email to the email below or go to our website to stlukegarland.org and, and, and look for the new members information there. We will gladly accept you with open arms. Come on, come on, come on. We will walk with you even though we have to be distant. <laughs> we will still walk with you and pray with you and walk with you this season and this journey. And we would love to grow our family here at St. Luke. So if you're looking for a church home, please feel free to reach out to us at, at the information below. And we be, be sure to reach out. Myself or Pastor Jasmine will reach out to you and pray with you and walk with you through this journey. We are so happy. We are so blessed for this opportunity. Now listen, enjoy your Thanksgiving. Remember, you are on the edge of, of a breakthrough. You are on the edge of peace of mind. You are on the edge of supernatural healing. What a mighty, mighty word. We are on the edge. And aren't you glad that there is blessings that are coming on the way at the end of the year? God knows just what to say to get us over that hump. Thank you, Pastor Amos, for bringing that word this morning. I pray it blessed you as much as it blessed me. Now, you know that there is someone that needs to hear this word. So go ahead and make sure that you share this worship experience with them this morning. I want to remind you again about the virtual lobby. I want to see you at 12 p.m. Central. Go ahead and go to the website, stlukegarland.org. Click that virtual lobby button. And we are excited to go ahead and get to greet each other in the virtual lobby. And then we'll see you at Thanksgiving morning uh, right there on the virtual Zoom uh, at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time where we're just gonna lift up the name of Jesus for just a little bit right before we eat our Thanksgiving brunch. And so we're just excited to see you at those two fellowship experiences. Let's go ahead. Come on, Brother Daryl, and tell us how we're gonna go cl close out worship. Thank you all for joining us this morning in virtual worship. We will see you guys again next week. Check us out on YouTube at St. Luke Garland or check us out on Facebook. You'll have a blessed day.